Hello, and today we are going to talk about weight regain, and we're going to talk about how to start to think about this differently. So it just came to my attention in the community that Katie at Runs for her Cookies had posted she had hit her highest weight in the last eight years. Now I've interviewed Katie twice, she is awesome, and we have actually delved into this discussion in some of the interviews about weight regain. I've talked to her off camera about weight regain, and I just want to kind of give you some, some thoughts around this and how we can use this as a learning opportunity. So maintaining your weight is hard as hell. It requires consistent work. You don't get to take a break just because you're at your goal. You're constantly doing the work to maintain, just like you did to lose. You just get about two to 400 more calories per day. Okay, so let's clear that up on the front end. Then let's talk about the idea of being married, personally, emotionally attached to being a certain body weight number versus what our body and our habits are supporting. Um, I want to encourage you, if you have yet not already done so, read The Diet Fix by Dr. Yanni Friedhoff. Excellent book. And he talks about your best weight. Um, I have recently interviewed him, and as of this date that I'm recording this, it has not yet come out and aired, but as soon as it does, I'm going to include it right here with this. What I asked him was, if somebody has lost a significant amount of weight, 100 pounds, whatever, and they regain 20 of it back, what would they say to them if they were feeling down, feeling like this pressure to get it back off, needing to relose it yet again? And he made a good point. He said, if this person is, do they will go to doing behaviors they probably will not maintain or sustain, and they will get back there. But then if those really are not maintainable and sustainable habits, behaviors, the weight will come back again. And as I read through Katie's post, and I know that this I think is her third time doing this, what I wanna encourage you, instead of feeling like you must be married to a certain body weight number, I should weigh 130, I should weigh 125, I should weigh whatever, getting emotionally attached to that, and then ultimately setting yourself up for a struggle to maintain, Think about your goal weight as a temporary parking spot. You think you want to weigh 130, you think you want to weigh 141, whatever the number is. Realize this is a temporary pause. You're going to see if your habits and, your, and your, um, your body are going to support you being at that weight long term. And when your weight does go up, let's just say you, you find that, okay, no, my body seems to keep gravitating to 150. I was thinking I was going to be 135, but it seems to gravitate towards 150 and I can maintain that pretty well. Then maybe that's your best weight. And instead of fighting that, instead of feeling like this desperation, this sense of my identity is wrapped up in being 125, what if we allowed ourselves to settle in at a weight that our habits and our body would be willing to keep up with? Because here's the deal you still win. You still win the game of weight loss. If you keep off 80 of 100 pounds you lost, that's huge. That's statistically. Um, against the norm. You have to think differently about this. So, so I know that's not what you probably want to hear. You probably want to hear, oh, just die up and get back down. To what extent? And how many times are you going to do that process? And keeping in mind, every time you diet back down, it's more stress on your body. And not to mention the fact that every single time you regain the weight, you're taking a gamble, it won't be to a higher weight. So if the first time you went from 125 up to 145, and then the next time you're up to 155, and then the next time you're up to 162, just as an example, what will it be next time? You see what I'm saying? So you have to be thinking long-term game here, not short-term. And the biggest issue is not the weight, because honestly, if you never weighed yourself, you wouldn't know. What it is is the emotional attachment to being 
a certain weight. It's the things that you think it means. And then ultimately this desperation to get back there that ends up causing this really unhealthy cycle. So I just want to take a moment. Katie is a rock star. She's sharing. She's putting the stuff out there. Let's not just read it and feel this momentary, oh, that's, you know, that's terrible. I hope that's best. I emailed her, told her about the diet fix, told her about the interview. I told her he hasn't gone out yet, but what ultimately he said, I'm going to encourage you, learn from her. Anytime someone is struggling and they're willing to share, because nobody wants to do that. Who wants to share that stuff? When they're willing to share, it's gold. It's your opportunity to go, huh, in the, in the time that she's been doing this, she's had to do this three times. Why? And what can I learn from this? And do I want to do that? And what if that means me settling in at a slightly higher weight and maybe not saying I've lost 100, but saying I've lost 80? What if that were to change? And how can I make this different for myself? All right, you guys have a fabulous day. Remember, the goal is whatever you lose to be able to keep it off, which means you may have to accept a higher best weight, which means you might be having to let go of that personal attachment to a certain scale weight, which means you have to be honest with yourself and say, this is something I'm willing to do for the long term. We can do this if we have different expectations and if we're willing to be honest with ourselves. You have a good one.